Well, we'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar for August 2022. We'd like to uh, welcome you to a discussion that's come across with a lot of our clients. And we are very, very uh, thankful to have our guest speaker with us today. Um, Eric Crowther is going to be with us. He's the president of uh, Crowther Macro Systems and CCC Macro Pro. Eric, welcome to our discussion. How are you doing today? Uh, just fine. Thanks. Thank you for so tell the, having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for thanks for being here. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you located? And what's some of your your hobbies you like to do? And um, tell us a little uh, bit about uh, your macro systems. Yeah. So. Um, I, I personally live in Oregon, um, in the countryside, more or less, not too far from Portland. I moved here a few years ago from Southern California, where I spent most of my career up until then. And um, our company was based in California all those years, and now it's in Oregon. But um, you know, my two key associates who work on programming and such, they, they still live in Southern California and many, many of our clients. In fact, most of our clients are still California-based clients, and I travel down there a bit. Um, so um, now I live outside of the big city, um, get to look at trees, get a lot of rain here, but I like it, um, and it's green, so that's nice. And um, I travel quite a bit. That's probably my biggest hobby is I love to travel, but uh, because we have a little bit of land around our house here that I got from my family <laughs> inherited, um, I spend a lot of time gardening too, something I never did before. That's what I do now. I'm a gardener and programmer, both. <laughs> nice, very yeah. nice. Well, thanks for sharing that and for being with us. I, you know, for, for those of us that are joining us, uh, I've, I've been acquainted with Eric's system and his macros and his template package for quite a while. And I invited him to be to kind of be part of the discussion on uh, really the kind of crutch of what all of this kind of comes down to is how do you select a good macro and temperate uh, template package? And there's a lot of things that, that go into that. And I thought there's no one better to talk to about this that has a lot of expertise, especially working with, with law firms uh, in the various practice groups and the experiences that come from, you know, creating the templates and macros for each of those groups, what's involved. Because many of the times it's just, it's hard to ask and what, what to do. Would you not agree? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm aware that as someone who provides a macro template solution, this is a little self-serving, right? To be talking about how you pick someone like me, but I started out working at a law firm in the 1980s for seven years up until the early nineties. And um, I did all kinds of things, including IT and writing my first macros. And um, I think I've always had kind of this perspective of the law firm insider, you know, about, selecting software and applications and solutions and seeing how they're implemented and how well or poorly they're implemented. And so that's helped me a lot in the 30 some odd years since then that I've been providing systems to firms and engaging very closely with all of our clients. Um, I've learned a lot more, but I'm always able to kind of adopt the perspective of the law firm um, and try to look out for, you know, helping folks make the best choices that they can. Um, so that's what we'll be talking about, right? Um, the that's slide exactly you where, That's why I have you here. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why I have you here. Um, right. and, and to know what 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 to do, what the, what the approach is, and how you pick something. Because essentially, you don't want to waste your money on some additional software. You want something that's going to be effective and utilized by the firm. So let's go ahead and start getting into those questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video uh, as we normally do. So you guys don't have to worry about my ugly mug and uh, you can concentrate on the uh, on the presentation that we prepared for you. And I'll pull my microphone a little closer that way, too. So our mm -hmm. first thing here we had you we had talked about this together, Eric, was how to um, you know, how to determine the best approach when you're going to think about a template and macro package. What are some of the questions you should think about or approaches you should uh, gather? Yeah, yeah. And I will turn off my video in a minute too. We can focus on slides, but I'll keep it on for just this question. Um, I want to say that the first thing you need to do when looking for any software application is to, is to identify 
what need you're trying to fulfill, right? Mm -hmm. um, one or more users at the firm might come to you and say, oh, you know, we need, we need a solution for something, right? And the first thing you want to do is find out whether you already have it. Um, so with respect to macros and templates, that's something that we're providing for Microsoft Word, right? To automate creating documents, to automate formatting documents. And so why do we do that? Why, do, why does anyone need a product like ours? Well, they need it if just using Microsoft Word alone and getting to know its features, hopefully, and using them as effectively as possible isn't good enough, right? Mm -hmm, and I right. Firms, firms run into the need for two reasons. One of them is because uh, some of the features of Word are actually very cumbersome and hard to use and hard to learn and, and very um, and, and require a lot of steps, you know, like doing numbering of headings and, and paragraphs, things like that. Um, some of the features aren't that well designed, frankly, for law firms at least. And the other reason is because people often don't know it well enough, meaning they don't even know how to use a lot of the features that are available effectively. So the first thing you want to do is identify what need you're hearing about, you know, what need you have, and whether there's anything you can do to address that need with what you already have, like get to know Microsoft Word better or get to know any other software programs you have better right. before you dive into buying a new one, right? Right, because it could be some, it could be training related. I'm sorry. That's right, because it could be training related. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I always tell our clients when, when we're, you know, discussing our prospective clients, I say, you know, the training is as important as the product in a way, because uh, what good is it to plug in a piece of software and not teach people how to use it and really take full advantage of it and make sure they understand how best to use it? People don't just figure it all out by themselves. I've learned that. That I know for sure. Um, we can put all the buttons and menus we want in front of them, but un unless somebody guides them through it and tells them how to use things under certain circumstances, how to do their work using these tools that are being adopted through whatever software package, um, people tend to kind of shy away and fall back on their old habits. You know, So training is a really, really, really key part of success. And I've always said, and you and I talked about this too, Joe, that you know, firms will go out and, and buy a package like ours to fulfill a need, like to make things more efficient and more consistent. But the implementation of it is as important as the product. Um, so it's really, really important to make sure people get to know it, that, it, that it's customized to whatever extent is necessary or possible for your firm's use so that people can make the best use of it and also teach people how to do it. Right, and that goes along towards the workflow, what types of automation you're looking for, and uh, you know, what, what type of native Microsoft Word features are you using or do you want to use or want to incorporate with that and, and so forth. So right. uh, but what would you say is another key factor, you know, you are, so I have these questions. I know that, you know, I, I have a pretty good training base uh, foundation of Microsoft Word. And I'm mm -hmm. having trouble with, you know, it, automating some of these other aspects of it. And, and just as an example, consistent formatting with my templates or consistent formatting or issues with effective use of numbering and things like that. What would you then say? What would you be your next step to, to, to go? Well, you know, the slide you have up is determine best approach. And what that refers to is to what extent do you want to add tools to what Microsoft Word provides in order mm -hmm. to make its use more efficient so that people can do things faster? And that's what we're about. And to what extent do you want to add tools like build templates or custom templates or automation to make people do things in a more consistent way, not just create a letter or a pleading and have the template be the same for everybody so that it's consistent, but even um, adopt tools that help people format the content of their documents and structure the content of their documents in a, in a consistent way throughout your firm so that people can work on each other's documents more effectively and, and um, have that level of consistency in the, in the work product that you send out the door, but also in the way you create it inside your firm. Um, so there, that's what you're, you know, when we say determine the best approach, it's sort of like, well, to what extent do you want to automate versus um, not automate? 
And also, are you looking for some kind of a generic off the shelf solution that has a bunch of tools that you can plug in and just use the way they are? Or do you need something that gets installed and then customized and tailored around your areas of practice and the way you like to do things, your preferences, mm -hmm. your, your way of working? And, and, and the answer can vary. One firm might prefer an off the shelf solution or something that has less automation and some basic tools. Some, some firms might pref prefer a more extensive, comprehensive set of tools, and they may want them customized a lot more uh, around the way they do things. It depends a little bit on to what extent you're automating, right? So that's right. what we mean with that approach. And it could also, it could also depend on your, your, resources internally as well. Uh, you know, let's say that I'm a larger firm and I have an internal IT staff versus uh, I'm a smaller firm and I don't have an IT staff. I have an MSP or I have someone who helps us part time. So, you know, what what type of things and do you, you know, I would need to look at something. Do I need to, it does it require a lot of maintenance? And if so, who's, who's gonna do that, that maintenance work, right? Wouldn't that play a part? Yeah, you're right. Um, huge question, which is, do you have the in-house capability to take, let's say, an off-the-shelf solution, a more generic solution, and then tailor it for your use? Because in the world that I inhabit, where we provide macros and templates, we are maybe uh, maybe the last standing company that still does a lot of customization and spends a lot of time tailoring our system for each law firm. Um, and the clients that hire us are looking for that, right? Mm -hmm. But there are some good products on the market that we compete with on some level, right? But that are more like a set of, of standard tools that enable you to build out your own templates for the different courts for pleadings or different kinds of transactional templates or whatever, right? So, so the question is, do you as a firm want to or have the capability or the resources or the people, right, to and the, and the expertise to customize a system yourselves, or are you gonna depend on a vendor like us or like the other vendors to customize it for you and provide that level of, you know, of, of adaptation um, of the right. product? Right, so once you've kind of made that determination on which route you're gonna go for, it still isn't just a matter of, okay, I'm just gonna go and purchase the software, we're ready to go. Uh, one of the things that you brought up, and I, I've been a, I've really, I, I can't un over emphasize how important it's been to rely on others who have had experience with and ask them, how did this go? How did your deployment go? How was the training? Uh, what roadblocks did you have? But actually talking to somebody about mm -hmm. what their experience was. Yeah. So like, that's the first thing I tell firms, even when they call me and they say, hey, we'd like to see a demo of your product. And I say, great, I'd love to show it to you. Let's talk about your firm. You know, what what kind of firm do you have? What areas of practice? What are your needs? What are you using now? Do you have a solution right now like ours? And are you replacing it? But the first one of the first things I tell them is, you know, when you're evaluating us or evaluating other vendors that provide software, call other law firms. I mean, or go mm -hmm. through Know, go through ILTA or go through the uh, Association of Legal Administrators or whoever you can reach out to in the community, right, at other firms, find out what they're using, but also find out how they feel about it, like interview them if you can. And, and, and in a way, when you're looking for a piece of software, the best way to find it is to talk to other firms, find out what they're using and what they're happy with. Now, that's the key question, right? If they're unhappy with it, well, <laughs> then maybe you won't look into that. But, you know, find out, like, are you? do you have a good solution? Do you have one you're happy with? Do you like the vendor? Do they provide good support? Are they responsive when you need things from them? How, how much attention do they pay to your particular needs? What do they charge? How do they charge for support and updates? All the questions that you would ask to evaluate a vendor, start by asking other law firms some of those questions and get a feeling for what kind of solutions other folks are using that hopefully they're happy with in order to guide you to the products that you should consider. And then you yeah. turn to the vendors after that, right? Right, exactly. And I, when we were having this, this discussion, it, it made me realize how important, because sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. You don't necessarily know the right questions to ask. I know what I want, but sometimes I forget some of these important questions, like what you mentioned about uh, the responsiveness or 
you know, was it customized exactly as you wanted to? What what were the pros and cons? Any regrets? Uh, yeah. And then, of course, the, the, on the billable side of things, about the the charges before, and then of course after, and updates and things like that. Again, very important things, but are easily over uh, easily overlooked when you're you know in, in the excitement of reviewing and you see these different things, which kind of takes us into our our next slide, which is you know getting a a demonstration of how the software actually works. Now, when when you talk about requesting demonstrations, what would you what would you say are some of the key things to pay attention to when doing this? Well, when you contact a vendor like like me for a, for a demo of their product, um, hopefully by then you've kind of narrowed down the list of products you're interested in based on talking to other firms and such. But once you do that, um, the key thing there is to involve the the right people at your firm because I do demos all the time. And sometimes let's say it's the IT director or the administrator of a firm who says, oh, I need to check out your product. Can I see a demo? And I say, sure. Um, but I always encourage them to include the people who will actually make the, the, the greatest use of our product. In other words, in our case, it might be rather than the IT director who's not gonna create pleadings or transactional documents, or even the administrator who does administrative work, include a couple of legal assistants who are, who've been around the block at your firm, who know it really well, like who know how things are done and how litigation should be done or how transactional documents are done and have people who actually do the work and, and people you trust at your firm who've been there for a while, who know the ins and outs, select some people to be get involved in the demo and see it. Now you can always do a preliminary demo to get a basic view of the system and then do a more um, a more elaborate demo for that group. Um, I do have that happen. I do two, three demos sometimes for firms. But at some mm -hmm. point, you need the actual people who will make the most use of the product to be the ones who are evaluating it and giving you feedback about it. So that's the number one thing. And then for, for demos, I'd say, um, you know, you need to be aware of the kinds of features you're looking for. Um, hopefully, the vendor will will pr the, who presents the demo will give you someone who's not just a salesperson who doesn't have who doesn't have right intimate knowledge of the legal industry or of um, how their product is customized and provided. Sometimes salespeople tend to be just salespeople um, who are good at sales, but not necessarily knowledgeable enough about law firms and how things are done or even how the product is used or customized or implemented. So you can always kind of poke the vendor a little bit and say, be sure to provide us someone who's seasoned, who really understands law firms and all that. And, right. and they should. Right? But that's an important consideration because the salesperson can kill the sell, even if it's a good product, <laughs> just if they don't, you know, they don't have that, that background. And then hopefully there'll be a little time for Q&A because you want to be able to ask some questions either during the demo or if the, if, if the format is better at the end, that's fine. But ask them to leave some room for questions and answers um, so that the participants at your firm can ask questions and get answers. And then when it's all over, the last thing I'd say is, make sure you collect good feedback from everyone who saw the demo at your firm, like have a dialogue about what their impressions were and what they thought and whether they think it would be an effective and good solution for your firm. So those are some of the, the keys for having a good demo. Yeah, those are really key. One of the ones that I, I wanted to highlight that we had mentioned together was just putting together a list of your, your key questions before the demo and when you're you know you're looking at marketing materials and you're you're checking things out beforehand before you actually get to the demo um that makes it so much easier that when you look at the demo it's almost as if you're already familiar with the product and you're looking for the fit now versus uh, i'll see yeah. a lot of times where a demo is the first time anyone's ever seen it and they like the demo they really really like the demo and but then once they have follow-up demos, it's sort of like it starts to become lackluster because they're the right questions weren't asked or the product is great. But as you start asking the questions and you start getting into it, you find out that it's it's not a good fit. And so basically there's been a lot of wasted time uh, on, on both parts and we just don't wanna waste anybody's time. And we know with, with law firms, particularly time is money. So we want, you know, effective use in the in the procedure of 
finding what's going to work well for them as well. And that that little bit of a little bit of homework ahead of time makes a huge difference in being able to have an effective uh, Q and A session with your vendor. Now, by, by the, that's why I always ask prospective clients before the demo a bit about their firm. And I go to the website and look at their areas of practice and see how many attorneys they have and what offices they have and where they're located. So you as a law firm could also help make your own demo experiences better by providing that information to, to the company that you're evaluating. Don't just contact them and say, can you do a demo, what date and time, but actually say, we're a law firm and we specialize in this type of law, this type of law, you know, whatever it is, describe a little bit about yourself to them and how big you are and where you have offices and what your main concerns are. And, and then make sure they respond to that, right? Hopefully they're receptive to that. And I mean, I would like to think that they'd ask you these questions, but if they don't, volunteer the information and you'll have a much more meaningful experience. Well said, well said. Now, speaking about demonstrations and things, I did want to highlight uh, the product that, that you have, which is the CCC Macro Pro. Uh, just sure. briefly, um, I have some screenshots here to, to show what your product looks like. Now, in, in the very beginning, we had talked about, you know, different types of, of customizations that are possible. And, you know, there you have several that are available. You have ribbon bars that you can include in Microsoft Word that, you know, obviously using the ribbon bars, that's familiar to everybody. They know how those work. Kind of, uh, kind of go over what we're seeing here. You have, there, there's three different areas. And yeah. uh, what, what, do they, what do they highlight and what are you focusing on? Yeah, so on the home tab, which is the picture at the top, you're seeing the demo version of our product where what we've done is put a lot of our features in three groups that are in a very prominent position right on the home tab of Word. Now, not all firms want those groups to be there. Some firms say, oh my gosh, that's changing the word, the word experience too much. Like, you know, can you just have the standard word home tab and put your stuff at the other end of it or on a separate tab? Mm -hmm. And we open the door to that. Like we customize our system for firms so we can move things around. But most of our clients want our features, the macros that create letters and pleadings and such, the um, style and numbering tools that are used to format the contents of your documents to be very front and center. And so that top image is showing you that arrangement where we're saying, okay, our stuff is right up front there uh, on the home tab. And then the other two images are two other tabs that provide additional features that you wouldn't use constantly all day long. The CCC style formatting tab in the middle is used to modify the characteristics of a style, like to make a formatting change to a style in a document. That's done from time to time, so you would just call up the tab when you need it. And it right. looks like it has tons of options in it, but they're really quite simple. And the cleanup tab, those are cleanup tools that are used to help reformat you know, paragraphs and headings in documents using the CCC system. And that also is something you would only do from time to time when you need it. Um, so it doesn't have to be at the front all the time. Great. Thanks for thanks for going over that. And by the way, the the one that I really find interesting, it's that's you know it goes beyond just a template and a macro for formatting or numbering, was the cleanup one because you know working with legal documents, you come across and informally working in law firm too, corrupt documents are just a way of life. And having a tool to help you quickly go through those and and uh, handle those in an effective way is is really really helpful. Now, uh, based on some of the choices you make on those uh, on those ribbon bars that we have there, uh, for example, we have the main one of the main macro menus that you can that you can utilize. This is just kind of demonstrating what the what the templates would look like. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, actually, this is just one option in the interface. Um, on the ribbon bar that we saw there, there was a button in the upper left that was an, a blue M that said macro. That brings up this menu. There's also a drop down menu there. So you can actually access um, a lot of these options in two different ways. And this is one of them. This is the more mm -hmm. traditional dialog box approach where we pop up a window with all these buttons and you choose to run a macro to create a letter or a memo or a fact sheet or envelopes or labels or to perform form some function or insert something, you know, so maybe a table of contents or insert a draft stamp or something like that. And so this is our main menu of correspondence, envelope and label macros, as well as what I call miscellaneous macros, which is a bunch of stuff right on the right hand side. Um, uh -huh. And that's separate from another menu we have for litigation, for example, with a lot of litigation tools and another one for form. 
So we right. have several menus like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's here's one for the for the litigation menu, uh, and obviously this will you know this is just a starting point because after you make selections here, it's going to take you down a whole uh, you know a, a whole workflow with your with yeah. your litigation documents and your pleading documents. Yeah, this is where you would go to start, you know, um, to create what we call a master caption for each case and possibly a master service list for the people being served on a case. And then from that point forward, people use the macros here to create new pleadings or to add things like a proof of service or certificate of service or declarations and uh, to insert numbered headings for discovery or complaints or answers or demurs to create statements of fact. So we have a lot of tools for litigation. Litigation is something that's really easy for us to automate because um, the structures used in pleadings, especially like California pleadings, but also elsewhere, um, they're very standardized, right? And there are rules about what they're supposed to look like. So we've been able to automate a whole lot in the in the area of litigation through this menu. Sure. But yeah, you get sure. interviewed. You have to answer a lot of prompts when you're creating a caption, like what court, what attorneys, what parties, what type of case. And then the macro guides you through assembling the caption that's appropriate for that court in that case. Right. Yeah, we don't want the, what we don't want everyone to look at this and go, oh, that's so easy. There's a lot behind the scenes here that goes along with this to, to make this work. Like, like you had said, a, a huge Q&A that goes along to, to figuring that out. And then, yeah. of course, uh, the other one that's really, really helpful is taking you know your your styles and Microsoft Word and the numbering that you have, and really enhancing the ability the abilities that are there with more features to make it more efficient and useful, especially in legal. Yeah, it's about making it. We provide a whole library of styles that we created using Word Style feature and also the numbering tools um, that help that make it as easy and quick as possible to apply formatting to apply formatting to headings, to paragraphs, or uh, to automatically number um, multiple levels of headings or paragraphs. And that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. Quite an so, array. Of it is quite an array. And I, we're, we're just giving a tip of the iceberg on some of the things sure. that, uh, you know, your, your macro package offers in the customization and automation. Oh my goodness, I can't even say the automation that goes on behind the scenes uh, mm -hmm. to aid in that efficiency and uh, in helping out. But now you have the demo, you you have the product in mind. When you're going through a demo, and we kind of hinted this, one of the things that we had talked about and just kind of giving our, our listeners and those that are joining in with us things to think about is what to ask, you know, the quest to write questions or ask. And you had given quite a number of them when we were talking about this, and we kind of put some of them together. This is not a uh, an exhaustive list, but it's some of the really key ones here that we had talked about. Um, and some of these, well, I would say most of these are based on your experience in working with firms and having Q&As and doing demos with them that came up with a lot of the questions you see here, right? Yeah, I mean, I think we have this slide and one after it that provide mm -hmm. a list questions that I would ask. And these are the questions that I have to answer all the time or that I hope to have to answer. In fact, I volunteer the information if I can. Things to think about when you're evaluating probably any software package, but especially the type we provide, um, to make sure that you know you ask the right things because it's really hard to think of that on the fly in a demo. It's good if before you have a demo or before you have a sales conversation with the vendor, um, you make a list like this. And you can use this, this presentation as a foundation for that, perhaps. Um, a list of the kinds of questions you should be sure to ask that vendor. Because it's it's more than just, does the product do this, that, and the other thing? Does it have the features? It's also, how do you implement it? Um, do you customize it for us? Um, how much do you customize? How much do you charge for the product? Do you charge extra for customization? Um, how long does it take you to turn things around when we need things from you? How responsive is your support? Now, you're going to ask their clients about that, other law firms, but you also need to ask the vendor. In fact, a lot of these questions are the questions you could ask other law firms about the products they use to see what they say about the vendor and the product. And then you also ask the vendor these questions, and hopefully you get a straight and thorough answer that satisfies you um, and and you can evaluate, you know, um, what they're offering and so yeah right. there's, there's the other yeah here's questions. the other here's the other list yeah. of questions here it, it essentially it's 
it's sort of like what we had mentioned in, in the beginning as well, because I, I have been in this situation where software is thrown at a situation. It's thrown at a problem. Yeah. And, you know, maybe for a larger firm, there can be a push for a piece of software. You get it into place. Um, it's rushed. There's, uh, you know, then it's like, who's doing the training? Oh, well, we want our IT staff to do the training, but they're not, they're not experts in that particular area of, of, uh, of law or how that's going to be used. Um, and it's brand new software. They have to go and learn it. And then what's, what training they're getting from the company? Or is, it, is the company providing that training and how are they going to do it? And what access do they need uh, and things like that? Really, really can waste a lot of time and money just by throwing software at a solution. And then before you know it, you have a whole catalog of software that you've purchased and have licensing for, and you may or may not be using. And it's just yeah, sitting on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, and not getting the benefit of all that. Right. You know, right. You know, maybe you're wasting time. <laughs> so <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, if you were to if you were to come break it down to just the 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 main key things to keep in mind when evaluating, you know, in this case, a macro or template solution, what would you say would be your your three key takeaways? for someone who is wondering, do I need this? Or if they're thinking about, I do need this, what would be three key take takeaways for them to walk away from on this? Yeah, I mean, I guess if we wanna make it three, I'd say um, the first question is, will the product, right, the solution, um, truly make us more efficient and consistent in the way we do this work? Will, will it improve? Mm -hmm the way we do our work. That's like the most important question of all, right? Does it have that promise? And then I would say um, another question is, how good is this vendor? Is this vendor really paying attention to our needs? Are they, and are, will they continue to do that after they've installed it, you know, and provided it to us? What's their long-term support, responsiveness, all that, right? So the, mm -hmm. the quality of the vendor matters a whole lot, not just the product. And then I'd say the third thing is make sure you really, really put time into the implementation, which is everything from customization of the product and providing information and making sure that the vendor is you know, taking care of what you need to the training itself, which is the most important part of the implementation perhaps, right? Um, installing is one thing, but showing people how to use it, that's critical. So I guess those are the three er main areas that I would focus on if you're gonna, yeah. So that, I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, I, I couldn't have summed that up any better. Well, Eric, thank you very much for, for being with us today, giving us some guidelines to help, you know, uh, what we're evaluating for when, when it comes to templates and macros, the right questions asked. Thank you for also spotlighting uh, some of the features of your, uh, your program, the CCC Macro Pro, and uh, the customization automation that goes along uh, with that. If anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out for Eric. You can see his uh, email address there, eric at legalmacros.com. As always, uh, feel free to reach out to us at info at terrapintechnology.com, and we would be happy to provide you more details and put you in touch with Eric, and he can uh, help you as well if you're looking for a macro and template solution. Eric, thank you for joining us today. This is very insightful and informative. Oh, thank you so much for um, having me join, for inviting me. Our pleasure. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.